Hello friends and welcome back. This is Ginny from Polly's Paper Studio. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be creating this fast and easy book base that is adaptable for many different themes. Today we're going to finish it with the gorgeous Voyage collection from Authentic Paper, trims from Really Reasonable Ribbon, and die cuts from Gina Marie Designs. So stick with me and we will make this together. Here's that Voyage collection. Now I just brought down my 6x6 paper pad so that I could share with you these patterns. But for today's project, I did use the 12 by 12 size. Now this collection is going to be great for all of your nautical theme projects, but it will work equally well for the summer holidays. So you've got your stars and stripes and red, white, and blue. So this is gonna be a great collection for a lot of different projects and themes. I've got my book base here disassembled and I wanted to share with you that this is a very simple, easy to create base and it doesn't involve a lot of fancy supplies. It's just your basic cardstock and I'll be the first to admit that I do love to make the extra interactive books with pockets and tags and all the fun things that you can create and add to your mini albums, but I also love to have a basic design that I can use and adapt it to different themes. So today we're doing nautical. This will work equally well for Christmas or for birthdays or any kind of book that you want to create. This is a good starting place. So it's only going to take a few sheets of this white cardstock to create the base. Now what I've done is I have cut one piece to be eight by 11 and a half. And I'm going to bring this to my score tool and add a score at one and a half, at five and a half, at six, and then at 10. And that will give me a four by eight inch finish book with a half inch spine on the left. It's also giving me these flaps which will turn into pockets that will hold our inserts. So the inserts are going to be the same width. They are still four inches wide, but the height is only going to be seven and a quarter. And you'll see why in a minute. This one I just brought to my score tool and I scored it at four and then four and an eighth. So this is going to help not only support the depth of that spine, when you put two in there, it will help to keep the shape of your spine, but it also helps to give you extra room inside of the inserts that will accommodate all the bulk from the paper layers that you're gonna be adding. So the first step you want to do you want to finish the back because it will be easier now before all the additional paper layers are on. I've just got my patterned paper here matted with blue cardstock. I happen to pick up a nice navy and that is going to be used throughout and that helps to tie all of these pages together. So now the back is on. You also want to finish the insides of the pockets. So when you seal them up, um, you wouldn't be able to get the pattern paper underneath of those flaps. So you have to do it now before you assemble the pockets. So I think it will be easier to start on this side. And I'm keeping that border of white cardstock all the way around. And there's one more for this side. And then we can seal up our pockets. So you're gonna want to use a good, strong wet adhesive for this and put your adhesive just on the very edge of this pocket. Don't go very crazy and add a lot so that it will squeeze out. You just want enough to secure that side. This is going to hold your insert. So you want it to be a good, strong adhesive and make sure that you go ahead and give pressure to that glue while it sets up. Make sure you get both sides. When you finish your inserts, you do wanna make sure that you are 
finishing it inside and out with the nice collection papers and also make sure to pick a non-contrasting pattern for your background so when you begin to add all your pictures and journaling it won't look so busy. Now my book is going to have a couple of photo mats and I want to add these to the side that is not going into the pocket just so that it won't create additional bulk. And so I've picked a complementary pattern. This one does come from the 6x6 paper pad, and this will just act as a nice photo mat. These are only 3x3, three three, but that will be a nice way to include your pictures and have a nice uh, border around them. That's the inside done. Let's work on the cover. Here is more of that pattern paper. I picked that gorgeous star, and I'm going to include a tip-in for this. I've picked a couple of the pop art style journal cut aparts and put that same blue matting on. And I want to add this to the front of this tip in. And I'll just go ahead and secure this flap right inside so that it will hold it securely. I've put a companion paper on the inside. This has almost no contrast, so it will be a great place to add your journaling and that way you can write the story that goes with your picture. So let's get that on the cover and then add the journal card right on top. Now you wanna try, if you can at all possible, to keep your tippins toward the outside of the book. That way it's not creating additional bulk to the spine. So here is one side. Okay, remember this insert is going to tuck into the left hand pocket of these pages. So you want to make sure that you're keeping your uh, image on the left hand side and that will just tuck right into that pocket. Okay, I've got another one here all set for the right hand side, so it's going to open in this direction. And then I've also put my journaling card tip in on the right, so it will be on the outside. And we'll just go ahead and attach that, and we can tuck this insert right in to here. Now you can see why we had to cut our inserts at seven and a quarter to accommodate the amount of space that glue needed to attach the flap. So here's the inside of that book and you can see how nicely all those paper layers filled that space and so it will keep a nice crisp fold on the spine. Okay this is the time you want to add the trim if you're going to add a ribbon closure because you want to sandwich that between the book base itself and the front cover. So I'll just pull off a generous amount of this beautiful diamond satin ribbon. So I'm just adding a touch of hot glue there that will hold it in place temporarily keep it from shifting. Here's the base for our cover and I just went with the same star as I put on the back because I thought that would give it a nice consistent look and I'm still using that nice white border of the book base around. So here is the bottom layer and I'm just going to top it with this beautiful hexagon with all of the nautical images inside. I've also cut a small banner shape. This has a stitch detail, so that gives it a little bit of extra interest. And that will just kind of peek through underneath where we add our flowers. I'm gonna add this doily. Now, this is the Lotus Blossom Oval from Gina Marie Designs. So you wanna go check that out. I will leave a link in the description below so you can find it and also make sure you let her know that I sent you over. And this will be the perfect base to add my vintage image. So this die comes with a layering element so that you can get that oval shape just perfectly cut to fill in that doily and I used it to cut part of the vintage image from one of the 4x6 cards. So this has some sweet vintage children playing at the beach. I put that on with a foam spacer and 
I added it with the double-sided adhesive along with a little bit of Tombow. My larger flower arrangement has a collection of Made By Me flowers and I used the same cardstock color for the leaves so that it would all coordinate very well. And then I brought in a little silver mirror cardstock as an extra foliage element. Here are some loopy twine bows and then just a nice selection of those flowers for the corner here. I'm going to bring in a second arrangement of the same style of flowers but just a little bit smaller. That will go at the top corner and before I add that I do want to attach these pretty nautical charms and then I can hide that glue edge underneath the flower arrangement. So I'll just hold it where I want those charms to fall. Push that into the glue. Here is that top arrangement. I'm being careful not to cover too much of that hat in the top of the image. And here is the larger arrangement for the bottom. You want to make sure that you keep your fragile flower and leaf pieces within the cover of the book so that they don't stick out over the edge. The final detail for the cover is going to be a second bow here. This is a navy wrinkle ribbon and I've just tied a small loopy bow. I'm going to tuck it in underneath the flowers to balance the top right corner. I can tie this book up and it will be a great place to display all of our favorite family pictures and memories. If you're interested in any of these products, I will leave links in the description below so you can check them out as well as links to all our social media sites. You can find us on Facebook Instagram, our blog, and our Etsy shop. If you enjoyed this project, make sure you give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell notification